Is everybody there? Yes, we got Amen. So 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 8. And above all things, have what? Fervent love one for another. Love covers a multitude of sins. Say love covers. Love, love covers. covers. Say it again. Say love covers. Love, love covers. covers. You know, church, I don't know if this is for somebody here or somebody watching online, watching the service online. God doesn't want to expose you. God wants his love to cover you. Amen. 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 That's good. God doesn't want to expose you. God wants his love to cover you. Amen. Right. Yes. And you know, church, so many times in the church and in our in even as a Christian, when people make mistakes, when people fall into sin, we want to expose them. Right. You know, did you know brother so and so did this? Do you know sister so and so did this? And it's, you know what, church? We're supposed to be covering one another. Amen. We're supposed to say, hey, you know what? Even though she may have ma made a mistake, even though she went back to the quote unquote world, I'm still going to love her. Amen. I'm still going to be there for her. Amen. I'm not going to turn against them. Amen. Right. Because they don't go to my church anymore doesn't mean that they're uh, uh, the devils. Yeah. That's good. That means, <laughs> hey, we're still brothers and sisters in the Amen. Lord. Amen. 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 Church, what are you going to do if I ever were to, to, by God's grace, I never will, but I'm just saying this as an example. What are you going to do if I were to ever fall into sin? Love me. Love, Love me. You are. And restore me, right? Amen. And what? Cover me. Yes. Amen. Not try to expose me. Not try to bring me down. <coughs> Amen, somebody. Amen. And you know what? what are we, you know, families, I see families that we want to hurt each other because we always want to expose people's faults. Right. Yes. Good. Amen. Amen. Instead of covering people's yes. faults. Amen. Your husband, maybe they hurt you. Do you expose him or do you cover him? Amen. What do you what about your wife? Maybe she's hurt you. Maybe he or she's had an affair, done something wrong, lied, really hurt y'all's marriage, and y'all chose to make amends for that. Do you cover them, or do you expose them? That's right. Oh, Church, we should be covering one another. Amen. Amen, Amen. 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 somebody. Amen. I'm not, listen to what I'm saying. I'm not saying that we don't deal with it. We have to deal with things. That, that's just life. I'm not saying that. We do deal with things. But I'm saying, are we here to expose things. Brother, Brother Tim, we'll look at the door. All right. Are we yeah. here to expose things or are we here to cover people's mistakes? What are we doing? Amen, somebody. Amen. Amen. Tell the person next to you, say, if you make a mistake, if you make, if you make a, a mistake, mistake, I'm gonna cover you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna cover, cover you. you. Amen. 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 With love. With love. <laughs> with love. <laughs> Amen, somebody. <laughs> when y'all see me eating McDonald's and I'm supposed to be eating a salad, don't condemn me. <laughs> 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 Cover me. Don't expose me. Don't be like my grandpa. That's not healthy. <laughs> Cover me, grandpa. <laughs> You know, we all make mistakes. Amen. We all do things. You know, church, yes. there's people that are in this church that are going to fail. Yes, <laughs> amen. But I want this to be a, a haven of love yes. and support. Amen. And not here to expose one another. Amen. amen. Somebody may fall into adultery. Somebody may do things that they may not do. But you know what? We love them. Amen. And they're still a part of us. Amen. Amen. Why love covers us. Right. Amen. I just feel like somebody needs to hear that. Amen. amen. The church has always, always wants to expose things. Now, I'm not talking about, listen, I'm not trying to say we don't deal with false doctrine or, or you know, deal with things like that. That's a totally different story. We deal with those things. But I'm saying when we're just trying to hurt our brother, our sister, because we have some propensity of uh, we want to pay back and, and get back to them and things like that. No, we need to cover them. Amen. We need to love them where they're at. Amen. Amen. Right. You, be, you know, one of the things that you should be able to say is, I never knew that about some brother so-and-so. 
I never knew that about sister so-and-so. I never knew they lived that life. I never knew they made that mistake. Why did you ever know? Because people covered him. God's love covers us, church. Amen. God doesn't see you where you are, Nick. Where you were, God sees where you are. Amen. And where your faith is that now. Amen. And even in a relationship, if you're ever going to move forward in a marriage and in a, in a, in you're dating somebody, there has you have to cover one another. Not always exposing one another. Right. You know, when you're talking about your spouse, if you always talk negative about them, I didn't get no amens in this church. <laughs> <laughs> I know we. I, I, I know there's. You know we say things jokingly. Oh, my husband's like this. I, I understand that. But we're, we're, honestly, listen to the things that come out of your mouth. That's right. I've been amen. listening to my messages. I've been trying to work on my what I say because I'm always saying, "Give me an amen." Amen. Are you listening? Are you listening? I say like, "Are you listening?" Like a thousand times in my message. I'm like, "Oh my God, it sounds so repetitive." <laughs> and I'm like, so I'm watching what I say. But what about us? Do we watch the things that we say? Amen. 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 Everybody loves Pastor Jamie. All right. Pastor Jamie's a delicate flower, isn't he, in the garden? <laughs> but I've seen the other side of Pastor Jamie. <laughs> <laughs> the bad side. <laughs> and he's seen the bad side of me. <laughs> Amen. But you know what? I'm not here to expose him. Amen. I'm here to cover him. Amen. You know why? Because he's my brother. Amen. Amen. And I'm his brother. Amen. And working together Amen. Brother Tim, the other day we were disagreeing with brother tim about something we we're talking about the bible and i said i don't agree with that brother tim i don't agree with that and, and brother tim said what do you think Jamie? and Jamie said i agree with larry and tim said is there anything you don't agree with <laughs> i said brother tim if you only knew brother tim if you only knew <laughs> but you know i think a lot of times brother jamie believes in me because i i've mentored brother jamie i brought brother jamie into church I witnessed to him, and he always tells me, I believe in you. I know if I ever have a question, I can bring it to you, because I know you're, you're going to lead me down the right path. I think that's why he always trusts us in everything that I say. It's not so much because we're friends. It's because when we were friends, he looked up to me as helping him with his walk with God, because he didn't have family there walking with him. He wasn't raised in church. So it, all he knew was me and the people around him that loved the Lord to be there. But that's why we have the relationship that we have. You understand what I'm trying to say? And but at the same time, church, I'm we're, are we covering one another? Or are we exposing? One? That's all I want to leave you with right now. Amen. What are we doing? <coughs> brother, what's your brother? What's your what's your brother's name? Bobby. Bobby. Bobby, we're not here to expose you. We're here to love you. Amen. 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 Love you. And we're here to cover you. Right. Amen. Man. We don't care what people say out there, Benny. That's right. About Benny or or about Edward or or about Shelly. We don't care about what they say. I want to know you for you. Amen. Amen. You know, let me tell you something. As a pastor of this church, there's people that have left other churches to come to this church. And the pastor has called me and say, so-and-so is going to give you hell when they start attending your church. So-and-so is going to want to take over your church. And you know what I do? Literally, I listen to it, but I let it go in one ear, Shelly, and out the other. Because you know what, church? I believe... I just have faith in the in the grace and the love that we have in this church. Amen. You know what? It'll change them when they come Amen. in. Amen. 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 And, and you know what? The people that have come to this church that have left other churches, they've never given me problems. Amen. Amen. If honestly they've been a big support to me in Amen. 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 Why? Because I'm not there to expose, I'm there to love them. Amen. Right. Right. Now, if you find another church, I'll expose you. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just joking. Little joke. Little joke. I'm just saying, church, do we really would love one another? What do we do with one another? What do we do with the failures? Brother Tim. If I can use Brother Tim. Had a hard life. He's made mistakes in his life. I'm sure there's things in his life he's not proud of. But nonetheless, he's my brother. Amen. Amen. Right. And I'm not here to expose him. I'm here to love him. Amen. Amen. Pastor Larry, are you ignoring his faults? No. I, I I may see what you see, but I'm not God. I can't change him. Right. I'm going to leave that up to God and let Amen. God do that. Amen. 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 Somebody. And I'm just going to love him where he's at. Why? Amen. Because love covers yes. a multitude of sins. Amen. Church, Jesus said the other day, I heard Pastor Prince say the other day on TV, it, it's easy to love people 
that love you. Yes, right. right. That's what the Pharisees do. Yeah. But it's hard to love the unlovable. Yes, amen. amen. Just love people where they're at. Amen. Let's just cover one another. Amen. 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 I just wanted to share that with y'all. Amen. 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 Ephesians, the sixth chapter. How many of y'all know we've been talking about spiritual warfare? Amen. 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 Don't get don't get scared. We've actually been talking about it from a place of rest. And just yeah. trusting on the Lord. Amen. Amen. We're not trying to make people foam at the mouth and looking for a devil under every rock. <laughs> but we're just trying to see that you know, <laughs> when when Paul opens Ephesians. <laughs> He talks about spiritual warfare or the armor of God. He talks about standing. He talks more about standing than he does anything else. You know, a lot of churches, when they when they talk about spiritual warfare, they think about combat boots, camouflage, and running into the devil's hell and with the, with the just buckets of water and splash it every demon. With water, holy water, whatever you want to call it, amen. And church, that's that's not the warfare that I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm talking about the warfare where you rest in God, that He's done the work, and you allow Him to continue to do that work amen. through amen. you, amen? amen. Amen. More times in Ephesians chapter six, when He talks about the armor of God, there's more standing than there is any kind of fighting. Right. Just stand, right? Amen. Why? Because Christ done the work. Yes. Right. Amen. That's a different approach than spiritual Amen. warfare I taught. Right. The spiritual warfare I taught was if your family's being attacked, go into your prayer room and pay and pray twenty hours a day. Yeah. You know? Get down to some real prayer and fasting. And I'm not saying don't fast, I'm not saying any of that. I'm just saying churches that you know what? We feel like if the devil's attacking, it's my job to get in the ring with with Muhammad Ali and throw down. Let's go. All right. Church, you're no match for the devil. Say I'm yes. no match. I'm no, no match. match for the devil. For the devil. Only Jesus can defeat them. Amen. He's been defeated. Amen. Amen. At the cross. How, how, how many of you believe in discipline your children? Amen. Yes. And not everybody's hand went up. Yes. That's why your kids are rebellious. On <laughs> you believe in discipline, right? Amen. When I grew up, my aunt raised us. We didn't talk back. You know, you don't, you don't even question. My grandma said it when her boys were grow, growing up. You don't say where we're we going to town. You just get in the car and we're going. Exactly. <laughs> you know, Amen. you just go. And you know what? I see kids now these days, Finny, and they talk back. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. And the mother's trying to be a friend to them. Not, nah, oh, if I walk, I backhand some of these kids. <laughs> <laughs> the way they talk to them. <laughs> <laughs> because of disrespect, church that we have. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You know, me and my grandma. We have my grandma. She is a board member of this church. I'm her pastor. But we know where that line crosses. <clears throat> and there's a time that I, I tell grandma, that's not what God wants you to do. And she receives that. There's other times that I talk to her as a grandson. But whenever she asks me a question or she calls my name, I always say, yes, ma'am. Or in Spanish, Monday. Amen. Exactly. No, ma'am. Can you do this for me? Yes, ma'am, I can. Why? Because at the end of the day, she's my grandmother. Yes. Yes. You understand? I'm not going to be like, you know, I'm your pastor. You're going to do it the way I tell you to do it. You know? No. At church, there's that respect. There's that boundary. Amen. You know what, church? Amen. I don't know why I'm saying all this. I lost my train of thought. But I'm just trying to tell you, churches, that you know what? <laughs> your kids, they're disciplined. That's what I was trying to say. When you discipline your kids, they know who's in, a, they know who's in charge, right? Yes. You know, we didn't get in trouble because... <laughs> That would be the end. My sister, they loved it. I used to, I didn't do too good in school. I would make bad grades. <laughs> so when the progress report would come, RJ, I always had a bad progress report. <laughs> and my sisters, they would get me off the bus and they would be like, ooh, and I was going to be mad when you get inside. She's already mad. I said, like, why? Because you got a bad progress report in the mail. <laughs> and I was scared. Because <laughs> my aunt, would, she never hit us. My aunt, that's one thing my aunt never did. She never spanked us. She yelled a lot, and she was very firm, but she never really had to spank us because just her voice was scareful already for us. <laughs> but you know what? When, it was in, when we were in my aunt's house, we knew who was an authority, and we knew that whatever she said, that's the way it was going to be. Okay, I'm saying all that to say this. The devil has been placed under our feet because of Christ's work on yeah, the cross. Amen, amen. Amen. And sometimes he's yeah. like a kid. 
that tries to steal cookies from the cookie jar when they know they're not supposed to. Mm -hmm. And what do you have to do? All you have to do is reaffirm that authority. I said no. I said you're not, you know, you gotta kind of swap their hand, right? Or spank them on the behind. What are you doing? You're just reaffirming that authority that's already yours. And so it is with the devil. And you know, the devil's gonna show his head sometimes in our problems, but our job is just to reinforce the authority that we already have over the devil. Are you understanding? Yeah. We're not trying to gain authority over the devil. We've already been given authority yeah. over yeah. the devil. Are y'all with me? Yeah. The Bible says I've given you authority to trample on serpents and things like that. So it's already been given to the believer. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. You know, you probably say, why does if the devil's been defeated, then why does he try to show his rear, you know, his head all the time? Because that's just the way the devil works. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, he, if you don't know who you are, then he's going to rain havoc in your yes. life. Right. Amen. Yeah. But when you know who you are Amen. and the authority that you have, they don't stand a chance. I always tell Sister Mary, Mary Escobar, I said, Ooh, the devil, when he when you come, the devil runs. <laughs> <laughs> this is an authority about it. The other day, Mary, last Sunday, I was going to tell you, last Sunday we were praying for uh, Carmen at, at the park. Yeah. And Mary, I could hardly stand it. <laughs> when she was praying, the... I felt like water was overtaking me. Wow. Like the anointing that I felt Amen. for her, it was like woof. And it just kept and it just kept like a tidal wave just woof. I mean she walks in a deep place mm -hmm. with the Lord. Amen. Is she perfect? No. No. But it's given to her by God's grace. Amen. Amen. Yes. You understand what I'm trying to say? I'm just saying Amen. is that even though we've been given the authority, don't think that the devil's not gonna try to rise up. But it's your job to exercise the authority and just stand your ground. Yes. And to, you don't need to fight. Amen. The fought's already been yes. fought. Yes. Amen. Exactly. If that's proper English or not, it's already been won. Mm -hmm. Where? At the work of the cross. Amen. Amen. Are y'all with me? Amen. Now, the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 16, we've been talking about every piece of the armor, so we're going to pick up and talk about the shield of faith. So Ephesians chapter 6, verse 16, if you don't have your Bible, it's on the screen. It says, above all, taking the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Do y'all see that? Yes. So notice what it says, it says above all. It means in front of all, over all. Now, a shield, listen to me, a shield during Bible times is they had like basically an arm shield. Like if they were, you know, if they were going to just, you know, sword fight or whatever, it would just be enough to protect their arm. But then they had those massive shields. That will protect the whole body, and, and 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 the most advanced weapon during that time was the flaming sword. I mean, the flame, yeah, the flaming arrow. I'm sorry, the flaming arrow. They would dip it or whatever, light it, and they would shoot that arrow. And their job was to try to shoot underneath the breastplate. How many of y'all know the Bible says that in the same chapter that the breastplate is the breastplate of righteousness, mm -hmm. right? And what they would do is they would try to get the linen underneath on fire. And if, it, if they would get it lit up on fire, then it would consume that whole person. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah. And what they would do, and, and, and when they would go to war, they would all line up. And they would hold their shields to protect their whole body. And they would move as a unit. And as they moved as a unit, as long they would throw the the arrows and it would hit the shield and it would hit the shield are y'all with me yes mm -hmm. and notice what it said it says to take the what the shield of faith so that you can quench all the darts of the wicked one faith is something church that we live by yes man amen i want everybody to help me real quick well not everybody but if you want to i want you to stand up And I want you to sit back down. <laughs> Richard did it twice. Double portion, amen. <laughs> Why did you make me do that? Because when you sat down, did you think about that chair? No. Subconsciously in your mind, you just did it. Why? Because it's going to hold you. Yes. You had faith in the chair. Yes. It's going to hold you. So it is with God. If we have faith, we should just have unconscious faith of what God wants to do in our lives. Amen. 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 The, the, 
even, even though that we, faith is not something that we perceive in the natural, you know, it's not, how can I say it? Like the way you live by faith in the natural, by, you know, when you lay your, your, all your sexiness on your bed, when you lay down, you believe that bed's gonna carry you. Yes, amen. amen. <laughs> I know I gotta throw a little joke in there. And then, why? Because you just believe, when you sit down on the pot, you believe it's gonna crack, it's gonna hold you. Amen. 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 <laughs> why? Because you just, you just do it. You do it without thinking about it. Just the way we walk by faith, if I can use it that way, in the natural, if there's faith in the spiritual that we got to have. Amen. That's Amen. it. Somewhere. Look at the scripture, the next scripture on the screen. Or just write them down for the sake of time. It says on the screen, for we walk by faith, not by, by sight. sight. Amen. Amen. Say faith. 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 Not sight. Not sight. Not sight. You see that? Jonathan, go to the next one. Look at the New Living Translation. Look how it says. It says, for we live by believing and not by what? Seeing. Seeing. Oh, I love that. Go to the next one. Look at the Amplified, the same scripture from the Amplified Bible. For we walk by faith, we listen, we regulate our lives and conduct ourselves by our what? Conviction or beliefs, respecting man's relationship to God and divine things with trust and holy what? Firmer. Thus we walk, not by sight or by appearance. Church, the devil wants to destroy your faith. He wants to destroy your faith. Do you know that even when you're fighting the good fight of faith, the sh you know you, the, the devil's throwing his darts. Yes. He's throwing his accusations at you. He's throwing things at your life. And you know that you're, 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 a shield will eventually get worn out. Mm -hmm. It'll take so many dents mm -hmm. until where it's just it's no good. You got to throw it away and put a new one. I'm saying that about your faith. Your faith, your shield of faith, if I can say it that way, or the faith that you're supposed to live in. It begins to be torn down sometimes. Mm -hmm. You take blow after blow after blow in your life. And you say to yourself, how can these things keep going in my life? And how am I going to be able to sustain my walk with God? Are y'all with me, church? Yes. Amen. And so, church, a lot of times the, way, the devil, even though things are coming out of us, we have to maintain that shield of faith. Now, I want to share something that the Lord laid on my heart. And this is what he told me. He says, don't allow the things happening to you to dictate your measure of spirituality. Amen. I'm going to say it again. Don't allow the things happening to you to dictate your measure of spirituality. Amen. Amen. Listen to me. I'm going to elaborate what I mean. Some of you think that because you're going through hell that God's not pleased with something in your life. That's right. right. <clears throat> Are y'all with me? Yeah, man, amen. I've heard, I remember when I came up in the church, they used to tell us this. If you're not fighting no demons, it's because you're not seeking after the Lord. Mm -hmm. Oh, how many of y'all heard that before? Yeah. Yes. And, 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 and if the devil is fighting you, it's because you're seeking the Lord. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm talking about? Yes. Your, listen, your situation does not determine God's love for you. Amen. I'll give you an example. Amen. A mother. They cannot have babies. Can say things like, "Why is God? Why is God doing this to me? Why?" Because we're starting to dictate <coughs> our condition and saying that I must be in this condition because God doesn't love me. Mm -hmm. That's not true, Church. You don't ever let your circumstances dictate your spirituality. Amen. Right? Amen. You don't. You don't sit there and say, "Well, if I guess God's not pleased with me, or there must be some kind of hidden sin in my life because I'm not able to get pregnant." Or I'm not able to have the breakthrough. No, the Bible says that while we were yet sinners, Christ demonstrated Amen. his love for us on the cross. Amen. God loves you in spite of your Amen. circumstance. Amen. God is for you in spite of what you're going through. Are you understanding what yes. I'm talking about? Yes. Don't listen to me. Don't don't sit there and always look at your, your the problem that you're going through and the things that you're going through and say, Okay, what is God <laughs> what is uh what is uh, God trying to teach me or what is God trying to do in my life necessarily? No, church. Just know that he loves you. He's always for you. Yes. He's not against you. Amen. Just because you're going through something doesn't mean that God withdrew his harm. Right. Some of y'all need to... Christianity is not going to be a bed of roses. No. Amen. It's never going to be that way. It's always going to be things come up into our lives that we have to fight. Mm -hmm. 
One of the things that we fight is that the enemy uses people. Oh, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yeah. Being a pastor for a year, I could say hallelujah. <laughs> the enemy uses people. <clears throat> the Bible says in Numbers, the 13th chapter and the 14th chapter, the Bible says that the Lord sent 12 spies into the land. Yes. And the Bible says they were supposed to go check out the land. And the Bible says that they saw giants in the land. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says that only two came back out of the 12. Caleb and Joshua. Not Caleb, the one that's here. Another Caleb. <laughs> <laughs> and the Bible says that they said what? Even though there's giants in the land, little Tim, we can overtake. Yes. Amen. What did they see? They saw through their eyes of faith. Amen. But you know what the other ones begin to say? The other ten? We can't do it. Right. We're like grasshoppers. Mm -hmm. We're not going to be able to overtake the enemy. You know what the Bible says, Brother Edward? The Bible says they didn't go into the promised land, but Caleb and Joshua did. Yeah, right. You know why? Because they saw through their eyes of faith. Yeah. People are going to come against you. People are going to talk about you on Facebook. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've had that happen already this week. <laughs> <laughs> People are going to run you down. People are not going to like that you come to New Covenant Church. People are not going to like the fact that you talk about faith all the time. But church, that's expected. The Bible says, you know what, that things are going to come against us. Jesus said, don't be surprised when you enter into various trials and tribulations. He said, those things are going to happen to you. Yes. But be of good cheer. I have over what? Come already. Yes. Yes. What do you do when things are coming against you? You see through your eyes of faith. Amen. I want you to place your hand over your eyes. Well, everybody in this church, I want you to place your hand over your eyes. And I want you to say, bless my eyes, bless my eyes for they see. For they see. And I want you to place your, your hand on your ears. And say this out loud. Say, bless my ears. Bless my ears. ears for they hear. For, for they, they hear. hear. Amen. Amen. I'm talking about your spiritual eyes and ears, church. And you get a revelation of it. <laughs> your spiritual eyes and ears. What do you see? What are you looking at? You know, the Bible says, listen to me. When you read Ephesians chapter 6, before he talks about the armor of God, Ismael, he talks about, about people submitting to their bosses and slaves and all that, about honoring your parents. And then he says, because we wrestle not against flesh and blood. I really believe that what he's trying to say is that, you know what? The people around you are not your problem. Amen. But that there's a force behind them. Yes, amen. amen. You understand what I'm talking about? You know, I people, if I can just get my husband. To come to church. Come on. And you, you're too busy fighting your husband. You're too busy fighting your wife. Getting them to straighten up. I ain't going to cook no dinner for him. He's going to cook his own dinner tonight. I mean, he can't come to church and he don't need to eat. That's the way some of us are. And you know what, church? Foolishness of you. Because you know what you're doing? You're seeing through your natural eye. Yes. Instead of your spiritual eye. But when you start seeing through your spiritual eye, you start realizing what? Hey, the devil's trying to distract me. The devil's trying to take my mind off of the things of God. The devil's trying to dis disrail me, if I could say it that way. You understand what I'm trying to say? Don't listen, church. Don't be surprised, like I said, when you go through things. When you go through circumstances. I go through things, but I don't flash it on Facebook every week. You know why? Because being a Christian and just life, you go through things. Mm -hmm. You don't even have to be a Christian. Just life. Just life. You know, the way I've learned to approach things is today I may have a good day. Today I may have a bad day. I am believing for a good day, but to an extent, I guess I would say I'm like, whatever will be, will be. Amen. Because I'm not going to focus on what's going to happen to me today. I'm just going to, with, with God's grace and his ability, I'm going to keep my eyes on him. Amen. And whatever will come my way, God will ward it off. Amen. And God will take care of it. Amen. Amen, somebody. Yes. Yes. That's the attitude that you need to have. Mm -hmm. Look at things through the spiritual realm. You know, before you go to work, do you bind the enemy? Do you pray for your day? Yes. Father, I think it's going to be a beautiful day, Lord. Yes. The Bible says that of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. The yes. Bible says there's life and death Amen. and the power of the what? The tongue. Amen. Do you speak your day blessed? Amen. 
Or do you wake up in a grouchy mood? Kicking the dog, yelling at the kids, <laughs> complaining because you're late to work. <clears throat> you see, you've already set the tone for your day. Right. Say this with me. Say, I, I, I create the atmosphere that I live in. Your home is whatever you created. That's true. Amen. Amen. If there's always bickering and fighting, that's the atmosphere you created. Amen. Don't blame God. That's the atmosphere Amen. you created. Right. If you're always fighting in your marriage, that's the atmosphere y'all created for one another. And yet you want God to intervene, but yet you keep nagging. That's right. Wow, that's good. That's good. You know what? Let me tell you something. You're married. Why don't you do this? Are you in a relationship? Why don't you say, Lord, here's my relationship. Here's my me and my spouse or my boyfriend or my girlfriend, whatever it is. And Father, I want you to not only change her or him, but I want you to change me. That's it. Amen. That's it. And I want you to show me what I need to work on. Amen. And I want you to do the work in my heart. Amen. And Father, I'm not going to focus on them, but I am putting them at your feet. Yes. But I want you to do a work in me. Amen. Amen. So that I can see things the way you see them. Amen. 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 Don't be surprised when circumstances come your way. But in Matthew, the 14th chapter. Matthew chapter 14, verse 22 through 31. It's on the screen. It says, Immediately Jesus made his disciples to get out of the boat and go before him onto the other side. While well, he sent the multitudes away, and when he had sent, oh, I guess I read it wrong. When he sent the multitudes away, he went up on the mountaintop by himself to pray. Now when evening was come, he was alone there. But the boat was now in the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves, for the wind was contrary. Now in the fourth watch of the night, say fourth watch. Fourth, fourth watch. watch. Who came to them? Jesus. Jesus came to them. Walking on the sea, verse 26. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out for fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I. Do not be afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. So he said, come. And when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw that the wind was blisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched out his hand, caught him, and said to him, O you of little faith, why did you what? No. Now, no. now notice what it says. It says Jesus came to him in the fourth watch. Yes. Do you know the fourth watch <clears throat> is the darkest time right before it turns daylight. He that has ears to hear. Yes. In your darkest moment, yes. God can show up. Amen. Amen. It could be the darkest time mm -hmm. and God came at their most pivotous moment of their life. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Where's your faith at? Thank you. Amen. What are you what are you what are you looking at? Where's your mind at church? Yeah. Amen. I don't walk. I really. <clears throat> I so, sometimes I wish my hands worked better. Sometimes I don't even like to look at myself because I see my hands. And sometimes I watch myself and I say, "What do y'all see that I don't see?" But I know that y'all see the God in me. Amen. Mm. Amen. And it blesses me. I'm being so transparent right now. It's unreal. Man. Man. So that's why I don't like to watch myself preaching. But you know what? <clears throat> you can look at things in the natural, or I can see things in the spirit. Amen. And I choose, and I still move my hands up here. I still do things up here, even though I've seen things that I've seen. You know why? Because I don't focus on what I see. I focus on the Lord Hallelujah. who I can't see. Right? Amen. Amen, somebody. Amen. What, what are you saying? Some of you can never get a breakthrough in the problem that some of you have habits. You fight things emotionally, mentally. And the reason why you haven't got your breakthrough, listen to me, I'm preaching to somebody because you spend so much time focusing on it. Amen. Amen. Good. 
Stop focusing on it and start looking unto Jesus. Amen. Are y'all with me? Amen. The Bible says that Peter said, if it's your will, bid me to come. Yeah. And the Bible says that he went. And what does it say? When he began to look at the storm, yes. at the situation around him, what happened? Yes. He went from faith to doubt. Yes. <laughs> Where are your eyes this morning? Come on. Amen. That's good. Do you have that shield of faith up? I'm taking blow after blow. Don't stop. Amen. Don't give up. Amen. Amen, somebody. Yes. Amen. Keep walking with the Lord. Amen. Keep Amen. I, man, I'm telling you, I was in middle school. I was in middle school when I felt a desire to preach. I'm close to 30, and we barely started a year ago. You know what I've been doing? I've been fighting a good fight of faith for a long time. Amen. 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 And I didn't see progress for a long time. Yes. Mm -hmm. But I didn't lose track of that. Amen. I kept my faith in the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Larry, let me not get ahead of myself. I'll, I'm going to go somewhere with this. Now, look, notice what it says. It says, basically it's saying this. You keep your eyes on Jesus, you'll have the faith that you need. Amen. You take your eyes off of Jesus, you're going to walk in doubt and unbelief. Mm -hmm. That's good. When you find yourself panicking... When you find yourself stressed, when you find yourself in anxiety and worry and fear, ask yourself, where are your eyes at that moment? Because sometimes we get side, we get, we get taken off. Amen, somebody. Amen. <clears throat> Don't lose faith. Amen. I'm going to tell you, you know when people start losing faith, <clears throat> is they start missing church. They don't come to Bible studies. They don't pray. You can see them dwindling. You know why? Because they got focused on their situation instead of the Lord. Amen. Church, let me tell you something. The more you focus on negative, the more you will become negative. That's right. The more you get around people that gossip, you become a gossiper. The more you hang around people. I'm telling you the truth. It's that way. The more you become people that have habits, you start picking up that habit. Amen. You start getting around people that disrespect their mother or their wife or their spouse. You start thinking you can go home and talk to your wife and your spouse like that until they put you on the couch. <laughs> and then you learn how to talk to your spouse like that. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Larry, now here's the question. Because I always say things that y'all probably think I'm crazy. Larry, how can you say that eyes on Jesus equals faith? Eyes off of Jesus equals doubt. How can you say that? Show me a scripture. Okay, I'm going to show you a scripture. Just put it on the screen, Jonathan. Hebrews 12, 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of what? Faith. Our faith. Now, the word R is not in the original Greek. It's just faith. The author and the finisher of what? Faith. So, Jesus, the, the word author there is, in other words, he's the originator. Amen. Or the perfecter of faith. If you need more faith, you know what you need to do? Is get your eyes on Jesus. Amen. How many of you need a breakthrough? Amen. Raise your hand. Amen. Raise them high. You need a breakthrough. Amen. My hand's up too. Yes, amen. Okay. What are you going to do to get that breakthrough? Keep my eyes on Jesus. Yeah, y'all got it. I should close the sermon right now. <laughs> Keep your eyes on Jesus. Amen. See, I put on Facebook, we're going to talk about building your faith. And y'all thought I was going to give... This big old blusterous message, ain't it? Church, it's simple. Just keep your eyes on Jesus. Amen. You know how you keep your eyes on Jesus? Is well, let me let me not get ahead of myself. I'm getting ahead of myself. So Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. For the joy before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame, and sat down at the right hand of the God. What does that mean? That means that even though he knew he was going to be humiliated and crucified, he saw the joy set before him. I believe that's us, the church, what the church was going to be, the people that were going to come to him because of his grace, his love, and his mercy. That was the joy set before him. Amen, somebody. Amen. Jesus is the author and finisher of our faith. Keep your eyes. Listen, the more you just do that, the more it all works out. Amen. Now, how do I keep my faith strong, Pastor Larry? I'm going to show you. Romans 10, 17. So then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the what? 
the word of God. How does faith come? By hearing in the word of God. In the Greek, it's not God, it's Christos, which is Christ. Hearing the word about Christ. How does faith come? By hearing I'm about hearing. Jesus. Amen. Now, the, listen, the context here is hearing the word of God by a minister. Y'all ain't gonna like that. <laughs> it's by hearing, because he's because in, in a few verses later or before, he says, how can they hear without a preacher? How can they go preach if they're not sent? <laughs> How many of you know people that say, I don't need church? Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. Oh. Yes. Amen. I'm a soul. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a lone ranger type of Christian. You know, the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. Amen. Well, there I hear the word, but the context is hearing it by a minister. Amen. Right. Amen. Listen, you, you cannot expect for your faith to grow and you haven't been in church a month. Can I, can I get an amen or amen? Amen. 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 You cannot, you, you, you just, it just won't happen. I've met people, I've, I've been a Christian for a long time. And I've met people, even when I was a youth pastor. And we, Jamie and I would minister to adults, Lily, no lie. Jamie can tell you this, this is no joke. We used to minister to adults, Caleb, and they wouldn't come for months. And when they would come, we would ask them, where have you been? We've been worried about you. And you know what, instead of saying, Oh, I've been on the mountaintop with Jesus. You know what they're saying? I've just been going through hell. I'm just losing everything. And they start pouring out their heart. That's why they've been missing church. You know why? Because their faith is dwindling. Amen. Right. Their shield of faith is being, if I can say it, penetrated, if I can say it that way. I'm not trying to bash you to go to church. I'm, I'm, not, I'm just trying to say there's a healthy balance for coming to the house of the Lord and hearing the gospel. Amen. And hearing Amen. about Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen, somebody. Yeah. You're not going to be strengthened if you think you're going to build it on your own. Yeah. Right. That's it. Amen. Amen, somebody. Right. Continue to hear the word of God. Now, what's, how does another way we can build our faith? 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. But we... With unveiled faces, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from what? From glory, glory to glory. glory. Just as glory just glory. as by the Spirit of the Lord. Lord. We are changed by beholding Jesus. Amen. Amen. Just behold Jesus. Well, Larry, what do you mean when you say behold Jesus? I'm saying this. You're sick and you see him as your healing. Mm -hmm. yes. You have emotional problems, you see him as your peace of mind. Amen. 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 Are y'all with me? Yeah. Amen. <clears throat> do you know do you, do you know Thursday night we talked about the seed sowing the this um the seed being sown on different types of grounds? One of the grounds it says the cares of the world. The word cares there it means anxiety. It can also mean stress. Do you know one of the ways that you know that the word's being taken from you is if you're always living in stress, fear, and anxiety, and worry? Amen. Amen. You're hearing it, but it's not taking root. Amen. Come on. Amen. Right. That's good. That's good. Real good. Real. Go look it up when you get home. The word cares. And that's what the, when we, we, we hear the word right now, we walk out the door, and you get a bad call. Oh, so and so, you know, we were supposed to do that, but it didn't work out. You know what you do? You start worrying about it. You know what happens? Everything I said just. And then your spouse reminds you, what did Pastor Larry say today? I know what Pastor Larry said. I heard the message, but, you know, you got to understand. Right there, that attitude right there, you need to get it in check. Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling the truth. Amen. You need to get that little attitude in check because the things that you're saying, that's the reason why you don't ever make progress in your walk with the Lord. Amen. That's good. Some of us need to learn to shut our mouth. Amen. 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 Uh oh, <laughs> this might not be too graceful, Shelly. Some of us need to be shut, shut our mouth. And let me tell you why I'm saying that before you start condemning yourself. We need to shut our mouth and stop speaking negative into the atmosphere. Amen. And start speaking negative things out of our mouth. Amen. It's best just to be quiet Amen. about it. Even when you're feeling worried about it, just be quiet. Amen. And just keep speaking words of faith. Amen. Keep speaking life to that thing. Amen. Yeah. Amen, somebody. Yeah. One more scripture. James chapter 1, verse 2 through 3. It says, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. 
I'm gonna read it again. Maybe I'll get an amen. Brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. Amen. 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 Knowing that the testing of your faith <laughs> produces patience. Amen. God, Lee, this is such a hard verse for me. Amen. Church, if you could see the joy that could come out of your problem, you'd be surprised. Amen. Yes. Amen. Are you complaining or are you rejoicing? Amen. Are you complaining or are you rejoicing? Rejoicing. <laughs> I'm going to say something that may be a little contradictory from what I said from the beginning, but let me explain to you. When you're in a trial, sometimes ask God, what can I learn from this? Amen. You ever ask God that, Brother Tim? You believe in God to pull you out, but maybe you should ask God, God, how can I come out of this trial? What can I get out of it? Are y'all with me? I heard Joyce Meyer say it one time. She goes, sometimes God puts you through the trial. You got to go through it again and again and again and again. So learn from it sometimes. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying all that's true. I'm just saying sometimes, church, I've, I've, been, I've been looking at my own self. How many of y'all know one of my biggest things is patience? Don't say amen, please. <laughs> I'm a very impatient man, Caleb. This church can tell you. But they're always, everybody in this church is always telling me, just be patient, Pastor Mary. It's going to work out. Don't get fed up. Don't get worried about it. And I find myself always in unpatient situations, Lily. Until one day I had to practice this. And I asked the Lord, God, what are you trying to teach me in this? And I remember we were praying about this building, about whether we should buy a new building and move out of here. And you know what the Lord spoke to me, Lily? That's when the Lord spoke to me this. Have I not always provided for you, even when you worried? I remember when I wanted my brand new wheelchair that I have at the house, the one that reclines and, and goes up, all that does all that fancy stuff. And I didn't have the money. But you know what, Emma? God brought the money. Amen. Amen. What was I doing? I was worrying. And then I found myself in another situation. And you know what, Shelly? God would provide for that situation. And you know what the Lord was beginning to teach me? Then maybe this is just for me, maybe. But the Lord was teaching me. I'm allowing you to go through those things. So that you can learn to see that you would just trust me. Yes. Yes. Just Amen. trust me. Yes. Amen. And some of you need to see your situation yes. like that. Yes, I'm not saying don't ask God to move it. We need to ask God yes. to move those things. Yes. But what I'm saying at the end of the day, maybe in the midst of your trial, saying, Father, what can I get out of this? Come on. That will better my character. That will better my trust in you. Yes. Amen. 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 How many of you have been down to nothing financially? Raise your hand. Amen. I mean, you... You didn't know how you were going to make it from week to week. Amen. And you know what? Maybe, and now you're blessed, but you know what it is to live with little. Come on. Yes. Right. Yes. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> I can't say that. I've been, I've been spoiled all my life. <laughs> Amen. My church members bring me enchiladas. That's why my pants don't fit. <laughs> I was telling the church this morning, I had to put a pair of pants on. I have, I have like three pair of dress pants, Benny, and I put the first ones in. Benny, they would not button. <laughs> I was sucking the gut in, and, so, and Jay, I told Jamie, they're not gonna go on. They're not. I said, you have to put another pair. We have to put another pair. But you know what? We are a type of people that we're always looking to get out of the problem instead of looking to get something from the problem. Oh Amen. man, that's good. That's good. Right that's good. That's good. Are y'all with me? Yeah. We're always looking to get out of the problem instead of looking for things to come. To, to get out of it. What, what can we learn from this? Amen, somebody. Amen. 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 Now, I'll give you a plain example, and I'm going to move on with this. Some of you are always financially broke because the moment you get a paycheck, you like to go to Houston and spend all your money at restaurants and buying stuff. Mm. But then you then you wonder why you're down to a penny. Come on. Maybe God is showing you that if you will learn to relax and stop spending your money, and be a good steward over what God's provided for you. Yes. Everything will work out. Some yes. of you don't even realize that you're blessed. You just don't know how to manage your blessing. Come on. Preach that. Amen, somebody. Amen. But we walk by faith. Amen. First Timothy chapter 6, verse 12. It says to fight the good fight of faith. Yes. 
one thing as a pastor, and I don't know if Pastor Jamie will agree with me, and I'm going to say this as a pastor. We're not going to get into all of that spiritual warfare business of fighting devils and calling down strongholds. We're not going to do that here. If you want to fight the devil and wear combat boots and go into five hours of intercession for a revival for America, find you another church. But you know what we're going to do here? We're going to rest in God's grace Amen. and God's love and Amen. believe that he's done the work for us. Amen. And just stand our ground. Amen. What do you mean stand our Just hold the shield of faith up. Amen. Just stand in the breastplate of righteousness. What? Just not let the Lord, the devil condemn me or people condemn me and know that my heart is protected by a shield that I'm the righteousness of God. Amen. Amen. Jesus. Amen. 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 And when the devil rises his head up, we're going to stomp on him. Amen. Yes. We continue more and we're going to build. Amen. Amen. And when he comes up, we're going to stomp on him again. We're not going to give him attention. Amen. Stop giving the devil attention. Yes. Amen. Let me tell you this. Say this with me. As a man thinketh, as a man thinketh so is he. So, so is he. Is he. The more I keep believing, Shelly, that I'm an impatient person, the more I'm going to live that way. Yes. The more you uh, believe that you're that you have that you cannot get rid of this unforgiveness, the more you're going to live that way. Yes. I'm always living in anxiety. I'm always living in fear and worry. And man, then you're going to live that way because you keep thinking that way. Yes. Right. Stop living by what you feel and start aligning your mind yes. with the word of God. Amen. 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 And let your mind be renewed to those things. Amen. 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 Give the Lord a hand clap. Amen. 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 Amen.